Welcome back to Skyrim, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alex, also known as Solanus Dracone, and we're going to be picking back up here. Of course, Benor is with us, and that's wonderful. Little bit of a correction from my last video. Um, after doing some research, I discovered that actually the default behavior, the default actions of companions, of followers in this game, is to actually fall to their knee in the middle of the battle. It is it has actually built into the game that they do not immediately die unless there's some kind of really freakish accident where enemies keep attacking them when they drop to the knee, or you kill them yourself. So by re-enabling the followers cannot die, I've basically returned it to how it behaves in Skyrim. From what I was observing, Benor was just getting his ass killed. He never took a knee. He was just getting flat out killed the same way I would. So maybe maybe just possibly followers are a little bit more resilient with that setting turned on but i'll be honest i'm not worried about it and the benefit of having it turned on is that i can basically draw my weapons or spells or what have you and they will immediately catch up to you wherever you happen to be and i think that's fair that's balancing it your companions your followers should be with you so let's just go ahead and move on to the next stage of the Mage's College quest. Just uh, a little bit of a goodie grab here. And now that Tolfdeer has told us we can, now we're going to the Archmage's quarters. And of course, when we get here, we're just seeking out Ar Archmage Savos Aaron right away. You are relatively new here. Yes, are I you am new. I have no. We have not spoken. Then you are introduced. I am, I am splendid. But I we are no, clear. Please. Sarthal. Uh, please don't tell me Tolfdeer. I uh -huh. thank you for Tolfdi. Yes. Since he's a and now he's going to ask me to go work. speak to Oregro Shura. You find yourself exploring Nordic ruins. Wonderful. Perhaps this would be helpful. So now that I've gained access to this room, I want to ransack it. And the thing about Savos Aran is that uh, he follows a fairly predictable path. Now he's going to leave this room right now. It's about almost 11 a.m. If you also wait until approximately 2 a.m. or 1 a.m., then he will actually go into his room and be completely oblivious to your presence. So I'm going to take this opportunity to steal every loving thing I can from his place, because he's not going to catch me. All the soul gems right here. I'm still hidden. Yoink, 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 yoink. I've already been on a path around Skyrim stealing and buying all the empty soul gems that I possibly can because I want I want to just have a load of soul gems and I'm also going to grab up all of the herbs and spices in his room he's completely gone he won't see me I have no idea why I'm taking all these potions possibly there's a conjuration potion in here or rather sorry an enchanter's potion that will be very valuable for me it's, it's very unlikely that he's gonna come back and find me here Ooh, garlic cool so, of course, also, you can ransack the garden. I'm just going to basically grab everything off of all the shelves, and then we'll move on to the next potential step. Oh, he, he appears to have returned. Okay, well then, let's just go ahead and wait about 13 hours and see what he does then. All right, it is about 12.21 a.m. Looks like he's going to have a little bit of a sippy there. And then when he's done, hopefully he's going to get up and walk to his bed. Hmm... Okay, give it one more hour. There we go. He's getting up. He's looking at his chair. But then he's like, nah, nah, I want to go to bed. I want to go to sleep. And his room is all the way back there. All the way back there. As soon as he walks out of sight, you are basically 100% free to just go nuts. So grab, grab, grab all the stuff in the garden. Every last herb. We're going to be making good use of all this stuff. This is going to be our final little sort of run for some money. So don't forget the Jazz Bay, don't forget the Lycan, all this good stuff. Okay, wonderful. I've pretty much robbed his garden blind, including all of the hanging moss, the tree in the middle, all of that. It's, it's all grabbed. So seeing as there's not really anything left to steal, we could take this unusual gem. That's not stealing. We can even take the coin purse. That's great. Ooh, can we get this hanging moss without waking him up? Oh, hey, what's up? No, no, you don't see nothing. Beautiful. Okay, let's, let's steal from his chest. I'm not going to risk it over 10 gold. Basically, let's just say anything that you do while everybody's back is turned, it will accrue no worrisome things. You won't, uh, you won't have a bounty, and they won't try to take everything back from you. 
but you uh, you will have a good round of stuff to try, so I'm just going to go ahead and eat all the ingredients I haven't eaten yet. And now that all of those are eaten, I'm just going to go through and drop anything that I did steal that I have absolutely no use for. Usually, well, the skull is stolen. I'm just going to drop anything here that I have absolutely no point for, just because I was grabbing it in my mad rush. Good enough. So, might as well do just another round of alchemy. Alright, got all of that nice and done, and I'm just going to take a quick look at my potions here. Yes, I still have the two blacksmith's potions. Let's see. Oh, and I got a couple of enchanter's filters. That's lovely. Uh, I wonder if I got anything more potent for enchanting. I think that the enchanter's filters are fine. We can't really sell the potions that we've stolen, uh, so I might just drop those. But, you know, it's, it's just good to have certain things uh, in your inventory. It's just good to have the blacksmith's and enchanter's potions. Those are perfectly acceptable. So yes, with the whole uh, companion not being immortal thing, the whole companions cannot die thing being turned off, I was actually shooting myself in the foot, and I'm already doing that by the no potions in battle rule, by the no in potions that don't enhance crafting. There you are. Oh, hi, Feralda. You. Have you? I just wanted to let you okay. know I'm not sure. Is there a problem? No, no. I don't think so. Between the two, he's an advisor, he's, after but all. But it never but hurts. It never hurts. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. All I right. did go ahead and speak to all of the instructors here at the college and buy out all of their unused soul gems. I will also mention that Enthir, who generally hangs out in the Hall of Attainment over there, will have a black soul gem in his inventory that refreshes about every 48 hours, same as any other shop, so if you want a good, reliable source of soul gems, that's a great place to do it. It costs about a thousand a pop, but uh, I'm going to be making plenty of money off of that. And of course, I gained a level from all the stuff that I was doing. I'm actually going to want to go ahead and put that into Mystic Binding at the very least. I prefer to use Soul Trap as my method of capture, but I'm finding that it's going to come a time that I am going to have to assist in battle ever so slightly. So one final stop before we move on to the next leg of our journey, uh, which, what what quest do they have? No, I'm not going to do hit in the books. Uh, the Black Star, eh, yeah, we could start doing that, but I'm more interested in uh, actually getting on with the story. But tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and pursue Forbidden Legend. Uh, Forbidden Legend, the second stage of that quest, the part especially that takes you to Fulgunther. Uh, there's something in Fulgunther that we want, and uh, that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, before we do that, I'm making one quick stop at Dragon's Reach. Because at Dragon's Reach is Farangar. Let's, let's just yoink. And yoink. Okay, good. He, he didn't see us. So we're going to talk to Farangar. He's oh, going to bitch at I us about not being on our way to Bleak Falls Barrow. Whatever. First off, I am going to go ahead and buy out his empty soul gems. I expect to be filling those up. But it's also time to actually buy a couple spells. These are spells you can't really make in the Atronach Forge. And there are places you can find them, but it's just a hassle. So Bound Sword, Candle Light, uh, already got Flame Atronach. I'll get Fast Healing. I will get Healing Hands. And I think that's good enough. I've got pretty much everything else. Off to Bleak Falls. Yeah, yeah, Bleak Falls, whatever. So use the books. Switch over to Magic Menu, and starting off with Alteration, I'm going to Favorite Candlelight, which uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, Conjuration, I'm going to highlight Bound Sword. I'm going to actually be making use of Bound Sword on occasion. I'm going to turn off Healing, turn on Fast Healing and Healing Hands, and that's about it. Uh-huh, Jarl is not a patient man. So. Another mod that I have installed, uh, this is probably going to be a surprise to no one, Candlelight. Basically what it does is it makes Candlelight cheaper to cast, it gives it a slightly warmer light effect, and it also lasts much longer. If we see here, Candlelight will now last 600 seconds, 10 minutes. Uh, Candlelight is normally quite an expensive spell, and it lasts a very short amount of time, and I don't think visibility is something we should honestly have to worry about in a game. That is that is not something I have ever appreciated as a method of difficulty in a game is the darkness setting. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep candlelight on. So we'll we'll just make a quick little run through, go over to Bellathor and sell off 
any crap that we can sell off to him, and after that we'll make our way to Morthol. Don't forget the general stores will often have unfilled uh, soul gems in their inventory. It's it's worth getting. I want them soul gems. All right, we're in Morthol now. So let me just go ahead and get my usuals equipped. Good, good. Banor, he's with us. All righty, still gonna grab up all the stuff. Looks like the uh, the death bells and whatnot have regrown around here, so that's nice. I'm gonna start petering off my purchase, uh, rather, not my purchase, I'm gonna start petering off my gathering of herbs just a little bit, because I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on about 7,700 gold, I, I can make a little bit more money off of that, that's fine, so I'll, I'll just keep collecting, but I think possibly as soon as Dragon Rising, we're actually going to stop doing the herbalism thing, so unless something cool happens on the way to Fulgenther, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip ahead. Uh-oh. Benar, could you, could you take care of that? Thank you. And that's of course the benefit of getting all those uh, empty soul gems, is we can fill them up pretty handily. One thing I'll mention is that I am slightly delaying doing Bleak Falls Barrow and then Dragon Rising, because it is after Dragon Rising that dragons actually start spawning on the map. That, you know, they, if you go to any of the dragon shrines, any of the word walls that are anywhere around Skyrim, there will not be dragons there, so now's the time to do any exploration you intend to do, any any big overland travel that you've got in mind, now's the time to do it, because when dragons start being around, they're, they're gonna be some. they're gonna be some. Also, do watch for these little flat pads, they produce giant lichen, which is an item, an ingredient, you know the drill. Hello! Yeah, come on. Come on after me. I dare ya. Nope, didn't work out for you, lol. Oh yeah, I should be getting the chitin off of these guys. Hello, what have we here? What's the- oh, it's spiders. Yep, you've been hit. Oh yeah, Benner's gonna put him down. Aw, I killed them already. I didn't get to trap them. Aw. Oh well. Okay, we've made up to Fulgunther, and in order to kick off the Galder legend, we have to read Danas Valen's journal. Which, all that does is tell us Danas Valen went in there. So we're gonna go in there. Into Fulgunther. Alright, so, um, first thing you're gonna notice on coming into Fulgunther, these, uh, there's already been a lot of stuff happening here. Looks like somebody already worked their way through and killed a bunch of stuff. Now remember, I, I still have turned off the uh, the followers cannot set off traps thing. So let's let's just take let's just take a wild bet here as to what happens with this. What did you think was gonna happen? So it appears as if in this room somebody's already figured out the rotating pillar puzzle and has applied whatever goes here, the ivory claw. Most curious indeed. Hello. And of course, Benor ran over the flames. He's a silly boy. That's okay though. It's in this room that things start to get a little dank. Hur hurry, turn around, activate the chain so that the door opens, and you can actually let your friend in. And of course, soul trap these guys up. Get in here. Get get in here, Benor. Okay. Just survived that one. How's Benor's health? He is fine. He is better than okay. Ah, just missed it. Oh well. Time for fast healing. Ah, I am refreshed. So alright, just a quick moment to loot around if you go over to this corner of the room. You get a one-handed book, which eventually I do pivot into one-handed on this character. Even even though I'm running her as an enchanter, I will eventually switch over to one-handed full-time. There's a plan in place. Heading into this room, the grating will automatically drop. Just hit the switch, and it comes back up. There's, there's really no penalty for falling down in there, so don't worry about it too much. Coming out up here, all the Draugr are indeed dead. And the man himself, Danas Valen. All we really need off of him is the Ivory Claw. We can read the notes, 
and it's going to tell us where all the other pieces are. Not worried about that. And honestly, the black mage robes are not. They don't. They don't have a lot going for them. But now we have the ivory claw. We're going to activate the keyhole and. Hello. Oh, Benor's got this. Good work, Benor. Really, really doing a great job with all that dwarven armor. Hey, hey yourself. That's uh, what what causes them to say hey and huh and oh is when you get too close to them. So that, sometimes they feel like you're they're pushing uh, they're being pushed aside. Hello, standing Draugr. Keep on pumping that conjuration out. And listen. Well, we just got something. Unless I missed my guess, I believe it's at level 50. Yes, that we get Adept Conjuration. And we can actually begin to start using our Frost Atronach. Which, you know, that'll be nice. But it'll also be annoying for other reasons. And Atronach sets off the trap. What you gonna do? Just test. Oh, God, I can only imagine what kind of bones are being broken. All right, have we got it all out of our system, guys? I bet we haven't. I bet we haven't. Watch. Yep, knew that was happening. It's also not a, not a bad idea to be sneaking full-time. Sneak is just a good thing in general to have. It increases your likelihood that you won't get detected. And, I don't know for sure, I, I can't possibly confirm, I have no way of knowing, but it might cause the enemies not to focus on you as much as on your companions, which is what you really want to see. Hello, Orcish War Axe. Well, I'm not using any one-handers, so that's just fine. Not, not really much good you can do with uh, any next level gear until you've actually got that smithing. Now, ooh, this is a puzzle, right? No, just do this one, and do this one, and the way is open. Boom. Can you tell I've been through Fulgunther a couple times? Enough to know that here's a Draugr, and here's a Rock Slide, and I'm just gonna try and Soul Trap this guy. Hopefully the rocks kill him. Hehehe, <laughs> yep. So predictable. Uh-oh, things get more intense in here. Benor has a little bit of trouble with the rocks, unfortunately. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, guys, guys. Oh yeah. It's all coming up, Roses. So far they have not leveled anything up here to the point that I can't handle it. I'm gonna step back here real quick, and of course, Snake Whale Chicken, basically, is the pattern. Oh no. You're trying to freeze me, but I'm kind of a brat. Oh, nope, I'm, I'm more I'm more, I'm more vulnerable against that. Nice kill. And of course, get your healing up. Never miss an opportunity to get your healing up. You want that healing capability. Uh, again, in this room, Snake Whale, Eagle. I know it's Eagle, I call it Chicken or Bird. Um, just double checking, there's nothing back here, but there is something on this side, and the funny part is, Benor knows he's there, he's like, I want at him, I want at him. Wait your turn, Benor, I want to get a soul trap on him. And Benor's doing just fine, again, he's, he's got no worries, that dwarven armor is serving him well, and the next time we go for a round of upgrading the armor, he's gonna be even better capable. So, thing is, about this spot right here, that's a trap that sets off this soul gem trap. Oh, god damn it, Benor. Oh well. Okay, back to what we're doing. Bird, whale, snack. And now that that's done, pull the chain. And, we go down. I don't want to go straight down, that's probably a bad idea. Some spiders. Yeah. Spider, 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 spider. Doing whatever a spider can. 
Benor's not here. He can't come down the stairs too well. I'm, I'm pretty sure... Oh, there he goes. Okay. Oh, shit. Gotta be aware, that hurts me too. If you've suffered even a little bit of damage, always heal in between battles. And don't forget, Frostbite Spiders have Frostbite Venom, which is still sellable. It's, it's basically the weight-to-value ratio. If something weighs only a little bit and is worth a lot, then, you know, just, it's worth carrying. Okay, the Room of Draugr. They come out two at a time, generally. Magic up for a soul trap yet. I Okay, I think I think I'm out of petty soul gems at the moment. So that's fine. Level up. Get my magicka up. Now let's let's see here. Conjuration being our primary build. You know, double duration is okay. But if I'm honest, it, it doesn't really affect how long they last in battle. They generally get killed in battle before they uh, <laughs> before they do much good. So, really, I'm thinking... Well, I did this last part. No, I did take enchanting. Okay, very odd. Um, doesn't really look like there's anything I want at the moment. So I guess that's just a perk I'll hold on to. I, I don't feel like it's necessary yet to take Atromancy. And Benor leveling up. Good, good. Okay. So, normally your first introduction to a Dragon Claw door is going to be in Bleak Falls Barrow, but obviously we're doing things out of order. If you ever want to know what the secret is, all you gotta do is go down to the Claw for this dungeon. In my case, I'm hitting the uh, R3. And look, it says Eagle, Eagle, Dragon. So that's what I gotta do. Eagle, Eagle, Dragon. Eagle, Eagle, Eagle. One more is dragon. Stick the claw in. And when it does the little jiggle in both directions, you know it worked. Now I generally back up a few spaces from these because if I'm right up against them while they're lowering, I get a wicked vertigo. I get super dizzy. Always take a brief look at weapons to see if they're enchanted. If they are, then you might be able to disenchant them. If they're not, well, no harm done. Fall Gunther Crypt. Okay, I guess we're right into it here, so this battle is going to be pretty interesting. Essentially, a bunch of Draugr Thralls will nice. jump out of nowhere. Wow. The Draugr Thralls are incredibly weak, so just hit up Mikrol. And you know what? I'm, I'm just going to try and stand back. Essentially, uh, Play Matronax is pretty much going to cook these people down. But Mikrol... See, Mikrol was nothing. M Mikrol was nothing. Benor is barely even suffering. So that, that was an easy, easy kill. And we killed Mikrol mainly for, well, there's the Galdor Amulet Fragment, but more importantly for me at least, the Galdor Blackblade. That, as far as I'm aware, is the only guaranteed, or at least most easily obtained guaranteed, Drain Life weapon. And Drain Life, aside from Banish Daedra, is pretty much your most valuable enchantment that you're gonna have. And of course, what are the rules with valuables in crafting? The more valuable it is, the more it gets your crafting up. So I wanted that. I could try to get Banished Aedra, but A, it, it just doesn't start appearing on any weapons in any shops until you're like level 22, and B, it's, it's incredibly difficult to find. So considering those points, and also considering that I've got the Filthy Met Rich Merchants thing installed, and under the normal rules, under the normal I don't have Filthy Rich Merchants installed rules, I would not be able to sell a Banished Daedra weapon to any any single thing, so I'm, I'm just going to keep it to the Absorb Health that keeps it at a low enough price that I can easily sell the things that I'm going to. 
the the little caveat, the little trick I'm going to do to avoid the the scrubbishness, because I, I want to try and keep it as much of a challenge as possible still within the game's constraints, is I'm going to not make any items that are too expensive to sell. What does our chest have for us today? Let's see, a hide shield, don't need it. Elven mace, don't need it. Ooh, Orcish Bow of Torpor. That's at least worth disenchanting. Draw to strength, gold, surgem, circuit of alteration. That's fine. And what does our word world give us? Frost Breath. Not to be confused with Ice Form. Frost Breath is fairly useless. Ice Form is incredibly helpful. So we got what we came here for. Let's head on out. Up this hallway, you got the Skyrim door. Just knock the sarcophagus lid out and let's see. Yep, this is the way we came in. I'm just going to drop down here and head out this way. And as you're exiting, don't forget that over here on this wall, there is a Dragon Claw keyhole for a quick and easy treasure chest. Not usually anything valuable, but an Orcish Greatsword doesn't suck. And a couple potions is good. I'm, I'm going to be going along the path of Orcish Smithing eventually. So probably when I get to that, uh, considering that even when I do go and get the Ancient Knowledge perk, which I will be getting, it's, it's not going to really affect the followers and their armor rating, so I'm going to still be making new sets of armor for every new level of smithing that I manage to get. Every, every time I get a new smithing type, I'll just be, you know, getting the ore that I need. And, and don't worry, I'll be guiding you to mines where, I can, where you can easily find that stuff. So out into Skyrim we go. And of course, we're back at Dragon's Reach for just a quick round of disenchanting and alchemy. So what of our disenchants get us? We get the Golder Black Blade, so now we have Absorb Health, Pushish Bow of Torpor, Circlet of Alteration. I will disenchant one of the Enchanted Rings because I actually kept it the second time through because I, I'd like a health increase. And of course, I still hold on to my other two things here because nothing I can make just yet will actually match that. And of course, Alchemy, but I'll spare you all that. Okay, having exhausted all my recipes, I'm just going to go ahead back out into Whiterun. I'll do one more round of selling to Bellator, just any of the equipment I've currently got. And then we will be finally on our way to Bleak Falls Barrow. John Battleborn, that is not how you lean against something. I, I don't think that's how leaning works. You do you, though. You're a baller. Okay, finally back in Riverwood. Ooh, Thistle. Looks like most of Riverwood, Riverwood has regrown. And of course, don't forget that, on occasion, all this will regenerate, and this is all free stuff for you to take. We can use that later on. I'm, st I'm still carrying around a ton of Dwarven ingots, and I'm gonna need to make... You know what, I might as well look into making it now, as a matter of fact. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready with a Dwarven sword and a Dwarven shield in preparation for what is to come. Now, those things are, are very heavy. So I'm just going to give them to Benor to hang what, on to. What do you need to take? Oh, need I on. forgot. I should upgrade those while I have the chance. Ooh, I'm already up to exquisite level. Well, guess who's doing another round of upgrades? Hang tight, Benor. Alright, you, you can be on. back in your basic clothes for a moment. I've got work to do. Alright, so superior to exquisite brings it up by one point. It's worth doing. And, of course, at the workbench, 43 to 46, every little helps. Dwarven Shield Basic to Dwarven Shield Exquisite. That's about a five point difference. It all adds up. And of course, give all the Dwarven Let's stuff going. back to Ben Or. Looking good, buddy. Okay. Just go ahead and more or less head back out the same way you did as you were going towards Whiterun. I'm going to stop and gather the Thistle and the Amanitas, of course. The main difference is now when you get to this fork in the road, instead of turning right, and turn left. I, I have no idea what that man's on about, but I'm just, I'm not about to mess with his day. It's getting nightfall, so you know what? Let's get candlelight working for us. Back to Flame Atronach, and oh, yeah, I might, might want to remember to switch to Soul Trap. Switch, switch out of your alteration spells. Switch out of, uh, switch out of Transmute, because I, I transmuted before I left town. I just made sure to free up as much inventory space as possible and get as much money as possible. Obviously, this was well within my means. 
So heading up and towards the left, if you just follow this path, it will take you where you need to go. Okay, as you start to approach this tower right here, yeah, there will be guys there that see you. Thankfully, with the unofficial patch having fixed this, soul trapped at a distance, and here's a flame matronac to make your day even better. This, this guy is obviously toast. If we do this right, we won't even attract the attention of the third one. Oops, missed. Oh, God damn it! I hit Benor. Oh, it's close enough, is it? Is it still close enough, big bro? I could get a little bit closer if you want. Piss on you. Oh, yeah? How about you deal with that, huh? Ooh, that's a bandit outlaw. Slightly, slightly higher. But it looks like the Flame Atronach is taking care of business. And he's worth a lesser soul, so that's nice. Up the stairs and over here is a treasure chest. Rarely anything good, but a, you know, fair for the level pile of gold in there. At this point, you can tell I'm not really worried about grabbing the hide stuff anymore, because we're already at 9,000 gold. And for our first big purchase that's coming up in the game, that's that's going to be more than enough. All right, so if you head back this away, you come on to the Bleak Falls Barrow area proper where there are going to be three bandits, but uh, would you believe I think we can deal with them? Oh, they're gonna notice us, all right. Have a flame at your neck, and let's play Can We Soul Trap Them? There's one, there's two. I'm not even worried about these guys, that's... I'm just running around soul trap... Oi! You jammy dodger. Nope. Nope. Lol. Run back behind Benor. Benor's got this. Oh, shit. I'm damn near dead. Okay. Hide. I can't even heal. I, I need to get my restoration up to 25 before I can actually get Adept, or rather Apprentice, and actually save my own damn life. That's going to have to be a big priority. We're, we're going to have to look into uh, getting our restoration up as much as possible. All right, with this, with those scrub lords taken care of, we can now proceed into Bleak Falls Temple. In Bleak Falls Temple, you're gonna see quite a few skeevers dotted about, and uh, you know, good good place for skeever tales if you want them, where we're again, we're, we're coming towards the end of uh, the alchemy that I'm gonna be doing, so just be, be ready for that. Action Jackson. Go on, let's see how you do. Uh, yeah, don't don't just stand around. Go after her. She is so so dead. Failed to capture Black Soul. That's a shame. Oh well. I'll make mention by the way. There there are no ruined books in Bleak Falls Barrow, so this is this is not a good place to go looking for them. I have not found a single ruined book in the entire time I've been here. And if you're just following the logical path, you'll run into this gentleman, who's actually a bit of a level tougher than everybody else. Let's start trouble with him. I'm going to wait until he's actually at the switch, pulling it. Uh-oh. That was a bad idea. Bandit thugs can be pretty bad. I'm actually going to put healing hands on, because I don't know as Benor is going to 100% survive this. Good kill, Benor. It was worth the lesser soul. Normally, he'll just pull the switch and get killed. If I had waited just a second longer, he would probably have been dead. So, in this place here, it's, it's gonna be Snake Snake Whale. Just tap once, tap once, tap once, tap again, tap again. Pull switch. Hurrah! Don't forget to go up here and get whatever's up here. Okay, so here comes Skeevers. Oh shit. I don't want to get bit by a skeever. They they can uh, give you ataxia, they can give you all kinds of diseases there. Your follower will take care of it, or your Atronach if you're being super hardcore and you didn't bring a follower with you, which I don't know why you wouldn't. Skill book for pickpocket on the table. Every little helps. Our next sort of target is going to be level 14. That's, that's when the next big thing that we want to do, the next level cap thing that I'm very interested in, is going to become available. 
in here on this table. Don't miss the Scroll of Fireball and the Weak Paralysis Poison. Very light to carry, but also very, uh, very good for selling. And of course, there's a poor unfortunate soul. I'm just gonna use the sword real quick. And you know what? I'll go ahead and burn my perk on getting the Soul Stealer. Because I intend to actually do a little bit of damage physically to this spider. It's a good idea to start getting my one-handed up. The Soul Stealer only lasts about five seconds, I think. But it does the job, and sometimes you do want to actually contribute. This spider can be a little bit tough sometimes. One more Magicka boost. And I'm going to actually keep boosting Magicka till my base reaches about 3 to 400. I'd say 400 is a good place to put it. Restoration, I'm, I'm going to hold on to my point for Restoration because I want to put into Apprentice level Restoration as soon as possible. Benor is leveling up. Of course, there are spider egg sacs all around the place, as well as desiccated corpses. Uh, feel free to grab as you like. Spider eggs, I think, actually do contain some very decent uh, effects. But here's Arvil the Swift. Boy, having candlelights making this damn near intolerable. Much better. Alright, Arvil. We know that how this is going to go down. Cut him down, huh? I cut him down in the most final way I could. Alright, switching back to Soul Trap. And it's at this point that things start to get a little bit draugery. Get ready for a fight. You're not wrong, Benor. Okay, you over there. Good, I hit you. Just gonna cast my Atronach in there so he'll get she'll get their attention quicker. I'll point you. And here's one. Oh, that looks like a Draugr Death Lord. No, oh, okay, it's not. Alright, I, I tagged all of them. If they have big enough souls for me to grab, I'm gonna grab those souls. Nope, okay. Don't forget, some of these uh, non-living Draugr still have stuff on them, so go ahead and loot the bodies if you're hard up for cash. And, oh boy. How are we gonna get through this one without Benor or the Flame Atronet killing himself, guys? Guys, no, 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 oh, you fucking doofuses. Well, he survived. She didn't. Oh, well. That one is almost guaranteed to be a restless Draugr. Oop, didn't hit him. Didn't hit him. I hit him. Conjuration's going up quick. We'll, we'll soon be able to use our Frost Atronach. Gonna be a couple more live ones down here. Ow! Come on. You're a restless one, that means you hurt a little bit more. The equivalent to a Feral Bull Roamer, I would suggest, actually. That's, that's probably an accurate description of what the Restless Draugr is. I can't help but notice something is seeing me. They're not seeing me anymore. Up, oh, hello. No. Enjoy. Man, I love this playstyle. Alright, honestly, with these swinging axes... Take the hit, pull the chain, just just deal with it. Consider it free restoration. Just three more to go, and I can uh, make my healing spells cheaper. So, time to crouch again. Sneak, sneak, sneak around. If you can get your sneaking up, that would be to your benefit. Hello, friend. getting easier and easier. And none of this is really from overpowering. This is this is just mostly from honestly just using the playstyle correctly. So let's let's see if I can wake him up first. And you got in the way. 
Yeah, that that should uh, that should take care of a few things up ahead. Not that you really need to do that, but it's always fun to use the oil traps when they're available. As you see, it it really got us out of a bind in halted stream camp. Oh, Benor, I'm trying to hit all the Draugr. But it looks like you guys took care of it. All going exactly to plan. This is where I wanted to be, folks. I wanted to be in this situation where I could go ahead, hit a soul trap on a guy, do very little actual threat damage to him, and get my minions to take care of him for me. Probably restless. Yes, you are. That means you'll be worth a lesser soul. Oh, boy. Just, just gonna get out of his way. Get out of the driver's way. You can find a lot of good money stuff in here. Good money to be made in Bleak Falls Barrow. Okay, when you get out into this section, you know, there's glowing mushrooms all over the place. Uh, the thing about picking glowing mushrooms is you want to generally aim for the bottom one. Because they, they come in those clusters of uh, about four or five. So just aim for the bottom one and you'll generally get it. Also, don't forget iron ore vein right here and a pickaxe by the skeleton, just in case you haven't already gotten a pickaxe. Ooh, Dwarven Sword, I didn't have to make one. That's okay, Dwarven Sword is, is fine. You know, I'll, I'll leave it be, it's not even worth all that much. 135 for weight 12, I, I, I don't consider it a necessity. And I've already made a Dwarven Sword for when I switch out, because my next companion, I'll just say it right up front, is going to be Lydia, the first house girl that you can get in the game, or I guess not the first you can get, but the most logical first one you're likely to get. Okay. Ooh, long distance. Sniper shotted soul trap for the win. And he still wants a taste of me. Actually, it's a she. That one's got boobs. Necrophiliacs, don't even think about it. It'd be like punching a jar of peanut butter. Okay, so in here at the bottom of this icy little area, you'll find a skeever and a couple skeletons, and of course, ye old treasure chest of wonder and grace. Anything good? Mm, you know, an elven helmet wouldn't be a bad idea for me to wear because I've got this shitty little hide thing on, so sure, it's still light armor. I'll grab it. Take what you can get. Let's see how that looks on me. Doesn't exactly look proper, but it'll do. It's, it's a little bit more... A little bit more protection, and eventually I am going to get elven smithing up and glass smithing. I'm going to be doing the tour of the smithing trees. To be honest, my, my normal playstyle is just to kind of wait for uh, the stuff to start spawning naturally, but since my companions aren't all that powered up as much as they used to be, I'm thinking that in order to continue relying on them, I'm going to want to just smith it up. And let's be honest, there's not a, lot, a whole lot else I'm going to be using my points on. This isn't, this isn't even a challenge anymore. We kind of need to roll over into the next tier of enemy for, for us to have any fun. But don't you worry, there's, there's going to be some fun to be had. You know, we're, we're eventually going to make our way into some Dwarven Ruins. And the Dwarven Spheres, those are nothing to sneeze at. Okay, those, those things will mess you up and they'll mess you up in a hurry. So don't, don't consider, uh, don't consider yourself overpowered just because you can get through Bleak Falls Barrow with very minimal damage. I'm just, I'm just gonna rush through, pull the chain, hit the guy, hit the other guy. Oh, he ran away. Oh well. Benor, catch up, please. Benor, catch up, please. Thank you. He's still not perfect, but he's, uh, he's managing. He's at least present and accounted for at most times now. We are just steamrolling this place. Again, no ruined books anywhere. Let's get another candle light up. And I think that's actually the last of the random Draugr we're going to be fighting. Yep, we are now in the Hall of Lore or whatever they call it. And I don't even need to check the Dragon's Claw to know what this is. One, one, one. 
one, one, one. Just, just do each one twice, and that's all you need to do. I've done this so much. Now let's let's talk about this vertigo here for a second. I don't know if that did it for you guys, but I got a little dizzy watching that. It's the whole something's moving but you're not thing. I don't know exactly what that's called, but it's a very common thing. If, if something's moving and you're not, that's, that's a very common way to induce nausea. And here... That's... that's... wow. You're not wrong, Benor. Here is the boss of Bleak Falls Barrow. You can actually get in here and loot the stuff. There's always a soul gem and a poison, as well as a chest. And, oh look, it's Meridia's Beacon. Oh god, not Meridia's Beacon. Alright, let's just get Meridia's Beacon out of the way. Okay, so her little spiel out of the way. Break of Dawn. At level 10 is about when that starts to begin. I'm gonna unhighlight Forbidden Legend. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight Golden Claw and Bleak Falls Barrow, because I often forget to bring the claw back to Luke and Valerian. Let's get ourselves the word, and that is what will trigger the Draugr to open. Now, give him just a second to get up out of his tomb, because I've actually had him fall through the damn world. He does Fusro Da, or just Fus, I guess. Honestly, I don't think you guys are going to have trouble handling him. Benor should be fine. I guess just to keep my healing going, I'll keep healing him. And that was really pathetically easy. And he's got the Dragonstone. He always seems to have a honed Ancient Nord Sword of Cold. I'll hold on to it because I could disenchant it. But that's it. That's Bleak Falls Barrow. Let's just go ahead and get the hell out of here. Back to Dragon's Reach, and you will find Farangar talking with Delphine. I'm gonna ignore them for a second. I'm just gonna disenchant anything I happen to have. And just interrupt their conversation. Hey, I got your thing. What about my reward? The Arl will give it to me. Okay. So now what happens is Irlet's gonna run up here all in her in a tizzy, her panties in a twist. You went into Bleak Falls Barrow and And something happened. I'm just gonna head up here, and y'all Balgruff, he, he runs into position, this is a scripted event. I'm just gonna stand sort of within y'all Balgruff's range, and we're just gonna wait and see, because they're, they're all gonna walk up the stairs, and they're all gonna give their spiel about the dragon, and then the Jarl's gonna talk to you and say, now you can buy property and all that good stuff. So let's let that happen. And so I got a hide shield of waning fire and the permission to purchase property within White Run here. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly... Actually, you know what, I'll talk to Avanichi first because it's... I think we should end this episode getting a house. I'm buying your house. I'll take it. Great. I'd like to decorate it. And I'm gonna basically take everything except for the alchemy laboratory. And there's a reason for that. Alright, everything except for the alchemy lab. And, uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at our new home. Irleth is going to be chatting up the guys at the front gate, but we now own Bree's home. So let's go ahead and pop our faces in. And it's a lovely house. And I think that's going to cut it for now. I want to thank everybody for watching. Once again, I am Alex, also known as Solonis Dracone, and this has been Skyrim. Thank you very much, and goodbye.